During the Cold War, state security was a relatively tractable problem because your enemy was a, a government in a country with a territory and a population that it wanted to protect. So you could threaten it. You could use deterrence or you could use alliances to keep potentially aggressive states in check. Terrorist groups are different. Right? They don't have territories. They don't have citizens to which they're answerable. They don't have a status quo that they want to preserve. In fact, by definition, terrorists want to overturn a status quo. Now, fortunately, terrorists and terrorist groups don't enjoy any of the resources that states do. They can't tax. They can't actually field well-developed militaries of their own. They don't have a lot of money. And they also have to operate in contexts that are pretty well monitored and governed by states. So they use the internet, they use cell phones, they use landlines, uh, they cross borders where they have to present some kind of identification to get into another country. So all kinds of ways in which states can actually keep tabs on them. And this is how states fight terrorism. They treat it as a management problem. They treat it as an intelligence and security problem. And when the war on terror is going well, nobody notices because the cells are being disrupted, they're being closely monitored, they're being tracked, the networks are being mapped, and arrests are being made quietly. Uh, it's when terrorism is in the news that the war on terror is not going well. And in fact, it's actually been going pretty well. Since 9-11, international cooperation in fighting terrorism has improved dramatically. A lot more intelligence sharing, a lot more effective coordination between the police and security services in different countries, uh, a lot more aggressive mapping, tracking, and rolling up of terrorist cells.